It's Taiwan hopes to sign an early harvest trade liberalization deal with the United States by the end of this year as both sides experience heightened tensions with China. The cabinet level office of trade negotiations expects to sign 11 components of the U.S.-Taiwan initiative on 21st century trade talks. The 11 set categories haven't been decided yet but they will include agriculture, environmental protection, trade facilitation, non-market policy and acceleration of the digital economy, including access to information, among others. Negotiations from the Taiwanese side say the full initiative will be a bit leaner than a traditional free trade agreement, given the lack of sweeping cuts in trade tariffs. Taiwan's Deputy Trade Representative Yang Zhen Ni has said they are still in talks with the U.S. over a time and location to hold the first round of meetings. The harvest meetings, as they are being called, are held to liberalize some trade between parties as a way to build trust towards reaching deeper agreements. The sides first agreed to hold trade talks in 1994 but had only met sporadically until this year. The initiative was announced in June and both sides reached a consensus in the month of August. For more on this story, we are now joined by Ross uh, Darrell Fingold uh, from Taipei. Mr. Fingold, thanks very much for speaking to Vion. Uh, the big question really is, how do you see China reacting to these new, new trade talks between uh, Taiwan and the U.S., given that uh, any sort of engagement between the two sides seems to irk China? That, that's correct. So any kind of official engagement, and let's let's be very clear, this is official engagement between the United States government and the Taiwan government, does tend to anger China. And what, what, what happens is other countries, and I expect the United States as well, will say that this doesn't change our policy towards Taiwan or our policy uh, uh, towards Taiwan's relationship with China. We still respect our one China uh, policy, et cetera, et cetera. So the United States is not the only country that periodically engages uh, in government to government talks with Taiwan over a range of issues, everything from trade issues to cultural issues uh, to various other kinds of things that affect uh, you know, Taiwan being one of the roughly one of the 20 largest economies in the world. It has ex extensive engagement with the outside world. So there are going to be agreements and China will complain. Uh, on the other hand, it, and, and the funny thing about this is if you look at this from, from a different perspective, China should probably be saying, uh, well, that's the best Taiwan could get it. It shows that the United States is not treating Taiwan as a country. It won't even sign an FTA with it. It's just signing what's basically a bunch of memorandums of understanding. But but China won't take that road. They're, they're, again, they're, they're going to complain and say, you're violating your commitments to us. All right. And also, how do you look at the statement from Taipei that says it aims to seal the deal with Washington as it coincides with the Chinese Communist Party's National Congress? Well, what, what, what might be interesting for, for, for the audience is the statement comes just weeks before a local election here in Taiwan, where local government leaders and council members across Taiwan are going to be elected. Uh, so actually, there's a large amount of domestic politics. And, and sure, it's good for the ruling party if they can make such announcements and get some good uh, press coverage and say we're doing a great job, whether domestically or in our relations with uh, our most important partner, the United States. So although this is related to uh, it certainly helps the ruling party in the local election. So uh, we should keep in mind that this is very much about domestic politics as much as it is about uh, Taiwan's relationship with China. All right. Uh, it is about domestic politics as well. And of course, this is a very crucial week for China and Xi Jinping. We leave it at that. Thanks very much, Mr. Fengold, for speaking to Vion and sharing your perspective with us on that developing story.